Welcome to the University of Tartu System Administration course. My name is Alobet and I will be your instructor today. In this video we will show how to log into ETS, create a new virtual machine, manage security groups, create a backup of a virtual machine and how to restore a virtual machine from backup. In order to begin you should first go to the ETS page. From there select self-service and log in with your preferred method. In the new page, you should go for the system administration, hit select. This is your project view. Most of the time you will be working in the research tab. In order to create your first machine, you also should go to the SSH keys and add a new SSH key. I already have one key there. In order to add a new one, you just click add SSH key, add your key name and your public key. How to do it is described in more detail in the lab manuals. In order to go back, just hit the back button. So let's create our first virtual machine. In order to do that, you should go to the virtual machines. There, find, look for the button, add virtual machine. The system may take a few seconds to load. Your virtual machine name should be your last name dash VM. The image we are using is Debian. This year it will be Debian 9. In the future years you might need to choose already Debian 10 or future versions of Debian. For the flavor we prefer the tiniest M1X small. That will be enough to complete all the tasks in the system administration course. Do not change the system volume size and data volume size. These ones are good enough. Also verify that you have the correct SSH key selected. You will not have access to the machine with username and password. Therefore, SSH key needs to be added to the new machine. Next selection security groups is also important in order for you to access your machine. Add SSH and ping. In the network selection, default network should be already selected, but instead of skipping the IP assignment, also assign floating IP address. This will be the IP you will use in order to access your machine. If you prefer, also add description and hit purchase. Now we have initiated creation of the new virtual machine. To access the machine, you should always go for the resources virtual machine. There you will have the list of created virtual machines. This machine will take few minutes. This machine will take up to five minutes to launch. So we will skip the video here, but you will have to wait in order to complete it. If you hit the refresh, you should see the internal IP and the new external IP address. External IP address will be the one that we will be using in order to access the machine. Next, you will need an SSH client to connect to the virtual machine. In Windows, the preferred SSH client is called PuTTY. In order to connect to the machine, you should enter the IP address to the host field. In order to access the machine with a key we added to the virtual machine earlier, you should also go for the data field, add the default user Debian, SSH, out, and also select the private key. In the session, you can save the session. 
In order to do that, you should type the name. Uh, say, save. And in order to connect, you just hit the open. First time, you will be asked about the SSH server key. Just hit yes. And this is your virtual machine you just created in the eight days. Now let's log out. Now let's see how to create a backup of the virtual machine in the ET system. Go to the virtual machine tabs, click on the virtual machine name, and go to the backups. There, you should either see already previous backups, or you have a button create to create launch a new backup. Backups can also be seen in the storage tab. In the volumes you see the volumes attached to virtual machines. Let's go back to virtual machines. Virtual machine, backup. And let's try to restore the machine from the backup. Restore. In order to restore the machine, original machine will be kept and a new machine will be launched next to the original one. This means you can have multiple machines running and backup can be used in order to clone the machine. As a flavor, we choose the small. The same default security groups are added. In the, network, in the network field, please select auto assign floating IP and the checkout summary should be all okay. In order to see the restored machine from the backup, go to the virtual machines if the newly created machine is not displayed there, click refresh. Then you will see a new machine that will be listed there. It might take a few minutes to fully create the new machine. Now we have the new machine also up and running that we recently created from the backup. In order to not to confuse them, let's change the name of the second one. That is the one that we created from the backup. Edit. New. And it will update the information in the system. So let's open the booty again. Load the profile that we created earlier and try to log into the machine that we created from the backup. First time you try to do that, you might receive an error, connection refused. If that happens, all you need to do is go back to the virtual machine and restart the machine. Now the new virtual machine has been restarted and we can try logging into it again. Reload the profile we created earlier, change the IP address to the new one and hit open. Now you should be able to log into the machine. And this is how you create a new virtual machine from the backup. Sometimes you want to also keep the old IP address. In order to do that, you first have to go 
to the original machine. Update floating IP addresses and remove the IP address. Submit. Do the same for the second machine. And now we can already choose the IP address we originally had for the original machine. And now the new machine has the old IP address. It means you can use the same configuration that we had in the top level domain with your new machine. And you don't need to inform instructors about your IP address change. It's also the great way to learn and practice for the exam in order not to break the original machine. Last activity that we will do in this video is delete the original machine In order to do that, we first have to stop the machine. We still cannot delete the machine because it has existing backups. So we first have to go and delete the backups and then we can delete the machine. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.